Actually, RAD started its land buying mission back in 2020. And so we started acquiring our, our first acres and our first land for construction and development, not for 2020, right, but for 2025. And so we looked at the scale of the market, we looked at where things were going, and we started putting down everything from a, a single lot of land, right, in the city of Philadelphia, all the way out to thousands of acres, right, in corridors between major cities. Now, we don't buy our farmland in order to turn it into development construction land. We buy farmland as farmland. So our development and construction land is actually very separate, right, from our development and construction properties. But how many of you get, like, you've got to start planning these things way out in front. If you don't start planning them now, you'll be behind the market instead of ahead of the market. So Paulo and his team, they started looking at things and, and, and you and your son had to start saying like, this housing shortage isn't that big of a deal yet, but they could see how fastly, quickly it was coming. And in America, one of the things we started to realize, right, is that the cost of construction was becoming too expensive to build properties in neighborhoods. A lot of people don't understand that a lot of poverty in America is created culturally. And the and re reason a lot of African American communities in America have cultural challenges is because they developed cash markets. Discrimination in the lending industry kept a lot of communities from the ability to be able to buy and sell property and allow buy property to grow in value because what developed was cash markets. Well, what happens is eventually the cost of construction supersedes the cost of housing. And when construction supersedes the cost of housing, nobody wants to build in those neighborhoods anymore. Nobody can rehab, nobody can fix, nobody can repair houses in those neighborhoods. When I bought my first tax deeds, and the cheapest one we ever bought was a $5,000 house in Philadelphia, right? When we first thought about that house, there was no way that the cost of construction made it financially smart to go ahead and rehab that house. Waiting a couple years, eventually it got to that point where it made sense to rehab and fix that house. But what Boxables does is it reduces this cost of construction to something that's reasonable and it can put good housing in good markets. Now, have you guys found financing available to people, right, when it comes to the Boxable product, or is that something you guys are working on? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, what Dutch is talking about uh, in terms of developers and, and, and risk, uh, ri you know, risk comes in in many forms. So, for that developer, they have to start putting out money at the, at the get-go, at the beginning, and they have to bring in all the different trades, and they have to start paying as they go. Um, it's, it's not really the best way. The Boxable way is that the... Um, the developer, who in most instances really just wants to be a, a marketing company and turn projects and market their communities uh, to uh, prospective homeowners, has to do all these other things. They have to build an open air factory. It doesn't really work. The boxable way, they keep their money in their pocket. Um, they have a lot less back end expenses in terms of uh, everything from architects uh, to accounting. Uh, and when they're ready to buy the product, they buy the product and it just ships next day, next week, uh, from the factory. So, uh, you know, debt is tricky, uh, but it's necessary to build any business. And uh, the, the Boxable product can help really help alleviate uh, developers when it, when it comes to that.